I'm off to pick him up. It's uh, 8.35 or thereabouts. Uh, it's a nine o'clock pickup. And I'm telling you now, if he's in bed, there's gonna be hell to pay. Now, when we go out in Injuna, I take quite a bit of time to plan. And so the interesting places we've been to, the uh, corners of the Solent, the tidally constrained places, the risky places. I admittedly, last time we went out down the itching, it wasn't a great success. But generally speaking, I put a lot of effort in, and Dave doesn't. So we've, with Dave, we've been to the end of the River Bewley once or twice for our days out. We've um, been to East Cows, the grey, miserable East Cows. We've been to a variety of places like that. There was that one place, a boat to nowhere or something. I can't remember what the episode was called. It was absolute farce. So I want to see what he comes up with. We shall find out where we're going. I have no idea what we're doing today. But we'll find out shortly. I suspect that the zero thought has been put into it. I'm a bit gutted. I just, uh, I just kicked my camera, my little, little camera, whatever they're called. Just kicked it over, overboard, and I watched it sink. We had so much recorded. I arrived at his house at nine o'clock, expecting him to be in bed. He wasn't in bed, but he did keep me hanging around while he was writing cards, and we had to go to the post office, and it, it took us ages to get to the boat as usual. Um, hang on a minute, I've got to choose my soup. Uh, he's, so, he's showing this because my vitling got us some abuse. Oh, this is absolutely... There's this is from one extreme to the other. This no, is, this, this is, is just a... No, no this is anal. Folks, you tell him, isn't this normal on a well I've got boat? I've got two Frey Bentos pies now on board. Yeah. We got down eventually, and then we, and we missed all that... We've lost all that video. We then went... Dave had got a parcel arrived at the um, marina office and we knew what it was going to be. The lovely Fiona had seen that he'd lost his cap uh, into the sea that she bought him and uh, there's the package and uh, we, we, he thought Fiona sent me a new cap and she had sent him a new cap. Where is it Dee? It's With here it. and not only no. a new cap but an industrial quality uh, retaining device. So this goes on my ear, I think. Fiona. Bulldog, right? bulldog, bulldog clip. Bulldog clip. She knew what he needed. That uh, goes on the cat. Look, she's given me a designer cat. I mean, not not just any cat. Beautiful torp cap. What's torp mean? That colour, David. Beautiful. All right. Thanks, Fiona. The lanyard. Oh, was... By the way, Fiona, my dinghy's getting a bit flat. It. You're such a generous soul. He's been saying I need a new dinghy. I don't know what it costs. No, to sell no, 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 no. No, that's not fair. He's he lost your hat, Fiona, and then he mentioned it on camera, and you sent him a new one. Now he's going to talk about how rubbish his dinghy is, hoping that you're going to see them. And you do not be persuaded. That's not kind. She no, might... it's true. No, 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 it's true. Blessed are those who give. It's more blessed to give than to receive. If she wants to give me a new tender, you let her give me Don't a new tender. Don't you dare give him a new tender. And a new outboard. Maybe a new boat. Mm. So anyway, we lost all that video of this opening of the parcel. And a very kind gift from Fiona. We then tendered across to the dinghy and we had this... Oh, we had a discussion. No. And he's even admitted in the past he never thinks about what to do. So I, today, he said, we're going to go to... Went last minute in the car, he said, we're going to go to ride. Now, let me tell him the true story. Last Friday, I invited him out on my boat with a pilot friend of mine. By the way, this pilot keeps <laughs> inviting me out. The last time I went out with him, and I'm a bit afraid of heights, I love flying, but bear in mind I'm a bit afraid of heights. As we're taxiing out to the runway, my door falls open. <laughs> That's like, that was not a good omen, was it? Anyway, I invited him, Rebets. No, can't do it. So he said, but I'm going sailing Thursday. You can join me if you want. 
And he also added later in the week, I've got a plan. I don't remember that, but I, it clearly was my fault. We did the few, a day or two beforehand say, should we take call runnings? And normally it's the skipper of the boat who decides, well, there was no decision. But we missed all of that. Um, yeah, we then did go in to find a pub we're in, in Ride, we're where in we Ride, are. which is a t t awful anchorage. Now, hang on, it's famous for the Beatles. Fiona, back me up on this. In fact, Foulweather Andy, you can back me up on this. She's got a ticket to ride, she's got a ticket to ride. That song is immortalised right here, right where we are. And it's a terrible anchorage. And by the way, did you mention to Fat Tomo, we've now made him an international celebrity. Fiona and Fat Tomo are famous now, and Andy, and Andy. And Andy will explain Andy in a minute. And they in Japan. Shh, shh, shh. No, get, no. On, get on with cooking. We had to go into a pub, and uh, we were going to get a burger or something, but they don't serve food, so we had a drink, and we've come back on board. Fortunately, this boat is vittled up. By the way, I had a lot of hassle about my vittling. Because of what you you, you cause trouble. Good, quite true. Yeah, we also tied up the dinghy on a little against a, a, a sort of key wall, and on our way out after having a drink, nothing to do with a drink, we um, we couldn't find it, and we'd gone to the wrong set of steps. We thought his dinghy had been stolen. <laughs> What's going on here? We left his dinghy at the wrong steps and we came back and we thought somebody had stolen it. Now, if it was my dinghy, that would be a problem, but with Dave's dinghy, it's, that would have been a real benefit. Uh, it goes flat and he's got an engine that he, he's dropped in the No, let's sea. be clear. No, no. <sighs> get to my dinghy this morning. By the way, I bought at great expense from him a second-hand engine. In fact, I'll show you. It cost me a fortune, and that's the manual for it, okay? It Look, that is the manual. I used it. It was almost new, it was only 18 months old. I used it a couple of times, and it completely stopped. In fact, it, it took me six attempts from the mooring boy to row back and forth to the marina before I could finally get this engine off to a place called BHG in Limington. I then get a phone call two weeks later saying the engine is written off and the exhaust rod has disintegrated. No, it's no good you laughing. You've got my money and I've got no engine. And I tried to sell it to them for spare parts and the man was very unkind. He said no. He said it's cost us an hour and a half, £150 worth of labour. He said I'll write that off and we'll dispose of it for you. I worked out his engine that I bought, this manual that I, I've read with great excitement looking forward to the years ahead cost me over £20 per use £20 per use like scam rental or what he, just to be clear he bought it for 150 quid, I think it was two years old or less it was in excellent condition and it was one day on the back of his tender and his tender Flipped upside no, down. You Split. tied the tender on to stop it flipping Skipper's over, tender. and then you came sheepish downstairs saying the tender's flipped over. Dave. Skipper's what tender we do? flipped upside down and sunk that engine, and now it's cost him 150 quid. 150 quid's not. You said it cost you a fortune. 150 quid. That's not a lot of for a money for hand. our viewers. And what about Cass on PBO salary? Sure. Yeah, we missed all that as well. Be a lot. Cass Schmidt. I'd like to talk about Cass Schmidt. If you listen to this, Cass, you know who you are. Cass, Cass I'm proud of Cass you. Cass Schmidt. She's is, a good journalist. Yeah, she's, she knows she's, a story when she sees one. That girl, she's ace. I mean, folks, you're going to be treated to journalism to die for. International quality in PBO. Anyway, there's an article. Cass Schmidt wrote an article about Lee Shaw's couple of years ago and um, she's we, I was going through the latest edition and there, there we were again and um, but we Cash Smith, she's, a, she's an interesting lady Cass Smith she she's a s impressive sailor yeah she's like us sailed she's got a racing yacht oh. a ra smallish racing yacht which she did the um, Ostar the transatlantic racing 
in 2020, correct me if I'm wrong, Cass, in, in a boat called Zest. She lives in France. Anyway, she writes for the PBO and she did an article saying, oh, the boys are back after their, uh, after COVID. And um, she says some rather nice things. So, Fat Tomo, you are now an international celebrity. Yeah, you, Fat Tomo. You'll be disappointed, Fat Tomo. He's making it sound more exciting than it was. She did talk about how we tried to find you. And uh, so your name is in... No, it's an extend, his name is extended in. paragraph with his name yeah, on it. An extended it. paragraph with the name Fat Tomo in it. It's true, yeah. Can't deny she, it. She also, Kaz Smith, has also renamed... Some, uh, she's called... Andy, foul weather Andy, so that's going to stick. Foul weather Andy. Um, Fiona, she got special Fiona, yeah, for you. she says she calls Woo-hoo! Fiona the siren from Marcus Island. Or the Marcus Island siren. Whoop, whoop. I don't think we'll call you that. Fiona, she's just Fiona to us. but Generous Fiona to me. Thank you, Chef. Hey. Well vetted this boat. So we've just been to the the King's the King Lud. The King <laughs> L-U-D, name, King Lud, Lud, you think King Lud. It's a nice pub. Friendly people, very friendly. Friendliest yeah. pub we've ever been to, I think. They reckon it's the cheapest pub on the island. No food. Yeah. But it's obviously a real community. The same people there every day. Probably the cheapest pub I've been to in a while because I didn't pay for it. <laughs> Surprise, surprise. First camera I've lost, you know. You are actually very careless with I've technology. Lost, I've lost two GoPros. I've lost four phones and an iPad. iPad we iPad. lost on the way to London, yeah. All overboard. Mm. So let's just top that up a minute. So that no, camera... No, 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 that'll be painful. Please don't Two do GoPros, four phones and one iPad. That's, That's a few grand, six. A few grand there. Yeah. That would have bought me a new tender and a new outboard. <coughs> anyway, people have been looking at our last episode and the tacking, the tacking masterclass. Mm. I don't think many people found it particularly masterclassful. So, Fat Tomo writes, I'm really impressed with this one, guys. You almost make me look competent. <laughs> Tomo, you are not. Trust me. Simon Taylor was impressed. Simon said he was skippering a boat, I think it was in Corfu that week, and he was going to use that masterclass to train his crew. Very wise. Yeah, very wise, that. At one point, the sail or the sheets or something got caught in my mast steps. I do remember that um, quite well. Skookum, Skookum, Skookum Jack. He commented on how nimble I was on the board. I thought that was fair. You shouldn't have to be nimble, should you? (laughs) That should never happen. No, but it's, it's a fair point. I'm quite, for my age. Fun time dad. Um, by the way, fun time dad. Thanks. No. Fun time dad. Who's, Bacon sandwich. Who's um, a fairly senior in the MCA or the Coast Guard. Oh, yeah. um, he's going to use it to train his, his uh, employees or staff. Use what exactly? Masterclass. Oh, well done. So he did notice, he, he did say, this is fun time, Dad, he said, he thought something was wrong. Obviously, you, you were on the helm and you, we ended up hoving too, do you remember? Yeah, And we did. And he said, I thought something was wrong when I saw your dinghy that we were towing started to overtake us. <laughs> Cash Smith said something interesting on mm. her article in PBO. She said... Lee Shores is the antithesis of uh, Le Vagabond. Le Vag- sailing the Vagabond. I think she means we've got no good looking girl in a bikini giving well, birth no, on No, no, it's probably. It, he's, he's got more hair on his head than we've got anywhere, ever had anywhere on our whole bodies. Um, no, speak for yourself, yeah. And so, the antithesis of sailing the Vagabond. Correct. And she said, it's a shame that they don't have any merchandising because, worst of the effect of, this is the one channel that I would buy merchandise for. Yeah, you'd from. trust us, wouldn't you, Kath? Well, hold this down because I want to show you something. I don't think you've seen this yet. Oh, no. What you... She's, she's no. Quite, she's quite mistaken, this Kath. Mm. 
Can I just say, he doesn't normally do this kind of thing? I've never done this sort of thing. Oh! Sorry, he's taking a bit of a... He's so slow. Can't, he can't even get out of his top. Look, we, we have got some merchandise that we can sell to anybody. It's even got, you have a look at the back. Why is it L, L and L? Lee Shaw's and Lazy Jacks. Yeah, there's not oh, three yeah. L's. Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. I didn't realise that. Did you see that? What, no, hang on, what do you mean you didn't realise it? Is that on the back? Yeah, moan, moan, moan. Well, only, only two of them say moan, I missed the Moan, typo. yeah. He's spelt the merchandise wrong. Lee Shaw's Lazy Jacks and lunches. You made that up. No, that's right, isn't it? L well, L. possibly, but how about this, Cass? He thought you'd like it so much, he's going to put his email in the comments. It's very dodgy, that. Be careful. You might be stalking on the quiet, but he's going to put his email there, and if you email him, he'll send you this merchandise signed by both of us, free of charge. Signed? Yeah. You can say I'd sign it. Yeah, and me. Well, both think? of us. What do you think, Cass? It's yours if you want it. Just send me your address in the, email. To the email below. And you don't even have to pay for it. It's free merchandise. What do you think, Dee? I, to be honest, I think it's hideous. Slightly embarrassing. Have you done that with a pen? Is that a pen? No, it's, it's like a print. No, that... No, don't do that, don't do that. And no. Cass... Cat, no, don't do that. Uh, why? It's your spit. I don't want it on me. Uh, but Cass, you might be wise not to wash it with other clothes. Just on its own. Pat, you may be best not to wash it at all. Um, just, just dab it under the armpits it's a bit with some, with it's some. Poor. It's embarrassing. I've got a shirt on under it, so it won't be too bad. But it's yours, Cass. Merchandising from Lee Shaw's Lazy Jackson Lunches, three yeah. L's. So many things. I'm so disappointed about that camera. You're disappointed. So many What's things. What's Rachel going to say? I just remembered that we, when we were coming back, yeah, and the dinghy from Ride, <coughs> we noticed that his um, nav lights were on. He left his nav lights on. They were lovely and bright, weren't they? I mean, they were vis aids for sure. Just to prove we did go to Ride. Cass did do one thing, Cass Schmidt. She accused of us, us of being fair weather sailors. Cass? She's got a point. No, we're dressed up, we've got gloves, I've got my snood on, two layers of thermos. Yeah, but it's, no, it's November and look. Just making a point, Cass. We hang on, get a hang on. say that again. One of the reasons we don't put the sails up It's often. wretched. Look, it's absolutely ri- oh. <laughs> Thousand flies, look all over the place. <laughs> can you please pull the handy I'm you? too disgusted no, to do anything. Do so I know this isn't the first time we've talked about it, but it's disgusting. No, no, I know what you're doing. It is. You come down here and you're making rude comments. No, it, Dave, it is disgusting. We, we, every time we put his sail up, at least a thousand flies are cleared out and they're, they're, they're washed away into the solent. And the next time we come, there's another thousand flies under there. Where do they keep coming from? Does anybody else have this problem in the solent? Or is it just Dave's boat? Because I'm, this is why this is interesting to know. If it's just Dave's boat, well, we all know what flies are attracted to, don't we? Is it a solent thing? Or is it a Dave Oliver thing? That's the question. Please let me know. What are you saying? You're stirring up trouble. I can sense it. What's he saying, folks? I'm, I'm asking a legitimate question. Is it filth or solent? Is it a, a regional problem? I've never heard of anybody else with the problem. Or is it a local filth problem? It's. I'd really like to know. I'm not trying to cause trouble. I'd really the like owner, to know. I'm wearing the hat now. Just keep the flies off. It's not hot, but it's been really useful. Thanks. So, um, 
my wife, she doesn't get upset with me, but she gets a bit exasperated because I lose so much stuff overboard. Yeah. I've got to go back and admit I've lost yet another camera. I think I'm going to stir this up a bit. I'm not going to tell her. I'm going to let her watch the video and she can uh, find okay. out. Okay, can't I even send her a text? No. Saying no. there's a confession to be had. No. Beautiful. Forgot my sunnies because it's November. I'd have been lost without my new cap. Really nice this day. It's quite a lot nicer than yours, isn't it? I think Fiona likes me more. I'll be able being overtaken day, which happens quite a lot when we're on call running. What are they overtaken? Why? Yeah. Clean bottom, well yeah, set sails, fast boat, nice lines, good skippering. 